Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India show the actual helicopter model and the various functions of the controls. Okay. Now, you see this is actually the engine. Engine gives the power through a centrifugal clutch. Okay. That means only after certain RPM, the clutch will engage. Now, the reason for that is Suppose in case of engine failure, engine will disengage completely, but the rotor will not stop. Rotor will continue to rotate and then you still can fly. Okay. That particular maneuver or uh, thing is called auto rotation because the helicopter you won't lose. It's not that suddenly engine failure, the helicopter does not drop, but then the engine is disengaged. Okay. Then from this there is a gearing mechanism because there is a reduction in the RPM. Okay. And through this gear, this is the rotor shaft, you can see, and then the main rotor is rotated. But there is no separate engine for tail rotor, please understand. Essentially, the same engine drives the tail rotor through this gear mechanism, you can see it has a bevel gear. Okay. So, when this rotate, the bevel gear is inside also is rotating. As a result, you can say the main rotor drives the tail rotor. So, in case of failure, engine only will disengage, but both the rotors will be operating. Now, the you need to control the angle, pitch angle of the blade from the non-rotating frame to the rotating frame okay. and this is the swash plate mechanism. You can see there are control rods here 1, 2 and this side and here also. Okay. These control rods are attached to some of the servo actuator system which we will show after that one by one. We have basically four servos, one we call it collective servo in which this particular unit will go up and down. When you make it up, the pitch angle of the blade changes, but it changes irrespective of whether the blade is here or there or any position, the angle is always the same. Okay. This is the collective. Similarly, you can do the longitudinal, I call it longitudinal cyclic, which means this is the tilting of the swash plate about an axis, this side perpendicular to that and it tilts in the longitudinal plane. But when it tilts, if you see that as I vary the azimuth of the blade, the pitch angle of the blade will change once in a revolution. Okay. Pitch angle will change once in a revolution. Similarly, bring it to neutral, you have the lateral and then the fourth control is basically to the tail rotor, he will change the pitch angle. So, so the tail rotor pitch angle will change if he moves the pedal. So, you now know there are four control angles, three for main rotor, one for the tail rotor in the conventional helicopter system. Conventional means single rotor, single 
tail. But there are some interesting points here is, let us look at the main rotor blade. Main rotor blade, you see it is attached now here through a bolt. Now I want you to think what kind of a rotor system is this, because I cannot, this is held, so I cannot do, because this is not that, this is attached to that blade, okay. It is not a seesaw configuration. This blade is independent of that blade even in flapping motion. There is no hinge here, okay. This is independent, that is independent. But in the lead lag, because it is a little tight, it cannot move, but sometimes it can go, okay. And the pitch bearing is right here, okay. So by moving the lever, I will say this lever, you basically move up and down. As a result, the pitch angle, you move the collective, you give collective. You see, the lever moves, see here. Huh? So, the pitch angle changes, but you see the blade is here, but the control rod is here. The location of the control rod is not straight below the blade, okay. That is essential because later you will see the importance of this. Your control rod is at possibly in this case it is 90 degrees. That means when I tilt the swash plate like this, pitch angle here is changing, not when the blade comes in this location. You follow? It is a very, it, that is why that is called the control rigging. You will learn when we study the dynamics, then you will say what is that control rigging which we are talking about. So the control rod location, because of the physical geometrical, because there is also certain mathematical thing how the system responds because of a control input that is very important for flying of the vehicle from the pilot's point of view. And of course, in this system, this is actually you can say pretty much like a real big helicopter. That is why I thought I will bring you here and show you. Almost from the functionality point of view, this helicopter behaves like a real big helicopter in terms of all the controls. But engine, now you see engine throttle is here, okay. That is also controlled by a servo. But the difference between uh, radio control models and the actual helicopter is here. In the radio unit, you may have some lever which you move, throttle will increase, okay. But in the actual helicopter, rotor RPM is fixed. It does not vary too much. Pilot has no control. He has a little control, but for all practical purposes, we say the rotor RPM is a fixed quantity. Here what we did was we actually designed a closed loop such that we maintain the rotor RPM to a fixed value, okay. That fixed value you can vary. Actually, we designed a closed loop control system. So, this is the sensor, it is a magnetic pickup. There is a magnetic collar here that will keep rotating. There are tiny magnets. When it crosses, a pulse comes, then we calculate what is the rotor RPM, then from the reference RPM to the actual RPM, then we give a feedback control. And now if you have any questions, I will leave you to ask me, so that I will explain one by one what is being done here, okay, in the helicopter system. But first thing will come is what is this, okay. This is there only for a two bladed helicopters, it is called the bell stabilizer bar. Okay. It is called a stabilizer bar mechanism. What is the use of this mechanism? This also looks like you say there is a small 
aerofoil type of uh, surface and attached to a long rod and when this rotates that is also rotating and if I move this up or down see the pitch angle of the blade is also changing that means the dynamic response of this influence the pitch but I can give pitch through this also from the swash blade please understand now you see you get pitch input to the blade from two sources one is from the swash plate which pilot gives another one from the response of this now this is a stabilizer bar they call it bell stabilizer bar mechanism it is always hinged at the center you see here it is like if I move this if I bring it down the other one goes up this is the teetering whereas this is not teetering please understand if I this is not teetering this particular mechanism sub is actually used for control purposes it aids suppose if there is a disturbance because of wind because later when you study aerodynamic then you say disturbance means what either the wind is stationary the helicopter moves so the relative wind the moment there is a relative wind the lift is going to change okay when the lift changes this will change its orientation because one side will get more other side will get less as a result this will tilt in a way that it will reduce the disturbance to the main rotor so this is essentially a passive passive control mechanism which is already built into the system it improves you may ask what if I remove it can I not fly you can but it will be more difficult to fly it aids in a little bit of control okay only for this is there only for two bladed rotor system not for three four nothing okay so please note that this is a little bit different from conventional uh, rest of the helicopter systems okay and then of course we have put uh, these are all our electrical thing which comes from that place and then we drive the servo because the electrical pulse we generate from the our computer or data acquisition system and then it is like both uplink downlink both are there okay and this is a gyroscope single axis gyroscope that is meant for measuring the yaw rate okay it is highly sensitive to what happens is any disturbance because even if some side wind it will start moving and it is difficult to control the helicopter whereas this aids you immediately sense what is the yaw rate that gives a feedback through some feedback mechanism an input to the tail and there are much more intricate things here in the sense we have this is one servo this is a servo this is a servo tail rotor servo is this which is likely have a different characteristic okay because servo means you want to activate some motion how fast you can activate okay that is very very important because you give an input <coughs> suppose it moves very slowly okay then that is not good but if it moves very fast also you will find it difficult to control so there are certain things where you need to know what rate you must give the input how the vehicle will respond everything plays an important role in the selection of each one of the sub system okay that is very very essential that is why in all these things you will find uh, one can learn lot of practical things okay in how you select a servo and all these control river length by changing it you will change the pitch angle also so the control rod length is very very important because if you elongate one of the rods you will find that the base angle itself is changed okay 
but those things are not done. Initially, there is something called uh, when the blades are attached, you want to make sure that the pitch angle of both the blades are identical in the neutral position because you don't know. They may have one blade may have a slight at a different angle of attack. Okay. So, they do something called a tracking and balancing. You may call it tuning because there are two things. Any system which is because this is a lifting surface, it has a mass and mass distribution. We say that both blades must be identical, right? But it is very difficult to have identical value. So, there can be a slight change in the mass because you can never make. Now, the tolerance how much you give is a question. So, what they will do is they will put it, they will rotate it. One is you measure the mass, physically you can measure it. Then you say some few hundred grams difference, then you have to add that. So, they usually have some boxes here, not in this model, but usually they will have some boxes in the blade. What they will do, they will go and add weight. They open the box, put the weight inside, some 200 grams, 300 grams, some small, small pellets kind of a thing, they put it and lock it. That means you make the blade almost equal mass distribution. See, mass, center of mass, and then mass moment of inertia, all must be equal. Then only it is dynamically equal. Okay. Then the next question comes aerodynamically are they identical because that is also equally important. There are two controls they will have. There will be one trailing edge tab in the rotor blade, trailing edge here, not the full thing somewhere here and through pitch control mechanism. So, they can adjust here of a blade. Suppose if during rotation, if one blade is going up means they will actually look at the track the blade. Please understand track. Okay. If the blade is going up means that means it is at a higher pitch angle. So, they mark the blades some color code. So, you know which is going up, which is down, then they adjust it. Once it comes to some level, then of course, they use the tab, that aerodynamic tab. Here it is not there, not in this. You can change, it is like slightly changing the camber of the blade, but it is set logged, that is it. But you can never make the rotor blade track in one plane, please understand. That is the practical difficulty. Theoretically, we assume that yes, all are identical, everything is going around beautiful, but then they give a tolerance, okay, maybe one inch, something like that, if it goes up and down, it is okay. okay. These are uh, real life problems, but when we treat mathematically, we assume that all the blades are identical, all the blades have the same characteristic. So, we say it is a rotor plane of rotation when I say this is the plane of rotation, you may say. Okay. This is the rotor disc plane, okay. but when it flaps up, the blade will go like this. Okay, during operation, it may go. Then you draw that. That is again the tip path plane. Now you understand. You draw a plane, all the blades are going. That is the tip path plane. Now you change the tip path plane by changing this. That is what we do. If you change the, you move a longitudinal give only longitudinal. See, if you give longitudinal, now the pitch angle is changed. You see, when I rotate it, I think I will keep this. You will find the blade will, pitch angle will change once in a revolution. So, the lift force at some region is more than the lift in some other region. As a result, because of that, increased lift, decreased lift, the blade has to go up and down, but this is a dynamics. Now, you see this is like a, you have learnt uh, basic vibration, 
spring mass damper system okay with the external loading external loading is actually aerodynamics damping also may come from aerodynamics please understand now you solve that simple equation and you see how the blade will respond to a given variation in the pitch okay that is a dynamic equation that is what you call it flap dynamics so now you know flap dynamics of the rotor blade is very very important for you to fly because that is the one which tilts the rotor plane of rotation you may call it like this like this you can turn anyway now there are several planes please understand defined because uh, you need to have reference coordinate system one is you say hub plane hub plane is this is the hub that's it even if the helicopter tilts my hub plane is like this okay because it is perpendicular to the shaft you agree then you can have tip path plane which is the blade response thing then you can have one more plane which is like swash blade plane that is you can call it control plane because control plane it may move like this so i am referring everything to the that plane and later we will see there is some no feathering plane a couple of things then you see what will be my reference plane okay because each reference plane has certain advantages but usually for clarity most of the formulations use one reference plane which is the hub plane even though it is complicated because it becomes easy so we always use hub plane so i am saying later when we as we go along the course you will see that what will be my reference axis system because this is a rotating axis please understand it is rotating and the helicopter is flying then what happens helicopter can do this that is a rigid body like aircraft whatever you study aircraft flight mechanics you study pitch roll yaw and then maneuver any of these motions that is as far as the fuselage is concerned but the blade that's also rotating that means when you do all this thing the blade axis of rotation keeps changing <laughs> you follow and then the blade in addition this does flapping pitch angle everything is changing so what reference plane i use for a systematic formulation otherwise it becomes you will lose track that is why when you develop the equation of motion which we will start next week you will define very clearly okay this is my axis system okay so basic dynamics that is just uh, kinematics and kinetics this is my axis system and then this is the rotating axis system i define my motion of the blade in that system okay so we will develop it in a very very systematic way of describing the motion of the blade because pitch angle is in the rotating frame please understand flap is in the rotating frame now the question is are you solving the dynamics in the rotating frame or you are outside when the rotor is rotating you don't see any blade you will only see a disc spinning so you see there is a difference between a person who is sitting on this he is going with the blade that means he sees that blade he doesn't bother about the rest of the blades how this blade behaves that is one that person sits in the rotating coordinate system somebody is sitting outside that is a pilot pilot is not in the rotating frame he is in a fixed frame now what you will see you will see only a disc spinning so for him how the disc moves 
he doesn't care what each blade does but there is a relationship between the disc motion and the blade motion okay these are all through certain transformations people do so you will find all these complexities because i am just introducing because we are here in the analysis of helicopter dynamics because you will have certain special type of equations themselves which you don't normally come across in aircraft some periodic coefficients because the time varying coefficient equations so you will find the class of problems are different and then you need to have the technique to solve those class of problems okay so we will develop one by one and then we will say okay you will understand if you have any doubt then you can come here you see how the system is okay and then how the response will look like maybe we will rotate some time input output like that you will see what we derive in the class then you will come and see oh this is what is really happening in the actual helicopter okay this is as was as the rotor and the tail rotor you see we have a small horizontal plate kind of a thing it is a horizontal surface like in your aircraft like a tail okay tail surface then you see there is another one which is a like a vertical tail okay why do we have because you say the rotor is there this is there is it necessary to have this there can be several reasons i am just indicate this may be to protect suppose if it comes and it's the ground or anything you don't want the blade to get damaged one could be that is why it is projected down plus in forward flight this can get a side force that can it can relieve the load required on the tail rotor okay and this is similarly it can give a lift that means for pitch moment control you may require but these are all fixed surfaces you can't vary them now i'll give you something if you look at because since i am told you you look at different configurations of just a one main rotor one tail rotor if it is a small helicopter you may find uh, it may not be there it may be only on one side okay and you see as the size becomes weight is increasing you will start seeing these things will be there or you will find that when the alh you will have side plate also end plate so you will start seeing suddenly some control surface type thing attached that is because if you don't have that you may not be able to fly the helicopter trim the helicopter you will learn what trim is you cannot reach some speed because if you don't have this surface moment balance cannot be obtained at some speed okay and if you want to have then you better put that and that is kept at a fixed angle and another thing i would like to say you see the tail rotor is outside this it's not within this okay it's kept away because the rotor downwash at least in hover this is a model it doesn't it should not be affecting the tail performance suppose if i put it here you really do not know what kind of a flow situation the tail rotor is operating on even now it is difficult in the real life situation if you look at the literature you will find very few very few literally on tail rotors because everything is companies experience they will use that and then whatever they get they put it because the study involved is more complex because if the main rotor if it flies forward if the wake comes and hits you really do not know what kind of a flow condition it is in okay so now you see the flow also because this flow can come and then hit the fuselage and when you fly forward there is a drag okay on the helicopter i can put a shroud you know around that nicely because here we opened it up you can put a nice 
aerodynamic shape. That is what most of the helicopter fuselages have a nice shape. But that is for aerodynamic shaping purely. But the rotor is exposed because that you cannot do much about it and they give a lot of drag. Okay. As you fly at high speed, the drag from the fuselage when we say even though we may add the hub as a part of the fuselage, but that is projecting out and it will have a lot of drag force. That is and these are all the restricting factors because it is not that I can fly any speed okay? because you will drag will increase as a result when you see the power which the engine supplies may not be sufficient and of course then the rotor blade you know various other effects undesirable effects will start coming up okay all right yeah any other question yeah, feel free to ask anything okay this is the outer sleeve which you see here okay and the inner one this is this so it comes and sits inside all right you see the slot when this one is rotating it's a very thin support you see so it will try to open up this is like a spring technically and when this opens up we have a surface here that is a special type of surface not a metal but we have to put a basically <laughs> this is an interesting story we need to get this material which really gives a good friction okay and then this will engage the outer sleeve once it engages that will rotate the moment this is attached to the engine please understand this is attached to the engine the moment engine fails what will happen this will come inside but this will continue to spin because there won't be any this will continue to rotate so engine is disengaged from the rotor because that is important otherwise if it is not engaged engine stops rotor will stop okay we don't want the rotor to if the rotor stops that's all then it is like a stone okay that is why always in helicopter engines you will have a, it will immediately disengage okay now there is a question of what is the rpm of the rotor how do you decide the rpm of the rotor because that is one of the important parameter in flying even though it may be a fixed number so the deciding factor what are all the undesirable effects of aerodynamics okay let us look at it one by one one is the tip speed because when it rotates tip is the one which is having the maximum speed maximum velocity you may call it but maximum speed now if the tip speed is in the as you increase the tip speed you are actually going from subsonic incompressible to subsonic compressible to transonic okay what will happen as you keep going you look at the drag on the blade drag what will happen drag will start after some mark number drag will increase okay that is called drag divergence mach number of an aerofoil now if the drag increases what is the effect your drag on the blade is increasing therefore you have to give a higher power to the from the engine now this is in hover you look at it hover condition now you fly forward your rpm is fixed in the advancing side which i was mentioning the relative velocity is actually higher 
that means on the tip the relative velocity is higher that means you will definitely go into the transonic zone. So, you will have increased drag. So, they look at the drag divergence Mach number as a it does not mean you will not cross you will cross that is one usually this is a primary number tip speed please note that tip speed of a helicopter main rotor even tail rotor that will be almost same it is around 210 200 meter per second which is about 0.6 mark ok in the less than 0.6 in the sea level and you take any helicopter now you look at the Jane Sal world various look look at the rotor blade radius look at the rpm so rpm is not is only a parameter even the rotor radius is important ok because if the blade radius is increased you basically reduce the rpm then you may ask I can reduce my rpm low 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 blade can be longer but then the drag on the blade will also go because you are increasing that you will study what is that. So, there are certain rotor radius how do you decide the rotor radius this is another question when we derive in the class I will tell you. So, once you say this is my rotor radius then I know what should be the tip speed ok. So, this is how they make tip speed is around 200 plus 200, 200, 210, 217 they do not go near 300 ok. Then you are actually entering into supersonic. So, that is why I said there is no supersonic thing may be at some point it can go you know on the top surface you may have some sonic ok, but not that the blades are designed to not for the supersonic thing ok. Now, the twist whether rotor blades are twisted here it is not a twisted blade it is a constant cross section going in the propeller blade you find it is not straight you find a large twist in the sense the tip is at a lower angle of attack than the root ok it goes like this here also some of the blades you know nowadays everybody makes there is a twist that is called the pre twist why do you give pre twist that is because uh, you get I said the inflow inflow means the flow normal to the we will say rotor disc but then when we actually derive in the class later we use normal to the hub plane hub plane ok and then we will go to the blade from there <coughs> that is the flow which comes like this this is the plane and the flow coming ok and you want that flow to be uniform everywhere everywhere means right from root to tip how do you get that and why do you want to get a uniform inflow ok mathematically you can show if it is a uniform inflow the power induced power required is minimum ok. So, mathematically you can show if it is uniform I will get minimum induced power I used a new word induced power we'll, when we do next week you we will know what that induced power means ok. Mathematically you have shown if it is uniform you get it how do I get it uniform that is the next question in reality ok that is through twist through twist you get uniform, but it is only near ok you can never get like this there is a variation ok that is why the blades are twisted ok to get a uniform inflow reasonably uniform when you do actual calculation then you will see oh you can get only up to this then you will say all right this is enough ok. How does the stabilizing mechanism? work how does it work means you say this is a this is a thin aerofoil very thin surface when it moves you get a lift right 
see one side goes up means the other side goes down, but when it goes up and down what happens? Which angle it is changing? That means, the dynamics of this affects the pitch angle of the blade, but what affects the dynamics of the blade? Uh, not the blade, dynamics of the stabilizer bar. You are not going to shake it. Please understand, if I start rotating it, immediately this will become, because the centrifugal force will pull this way, that side will pull, it will become perfect. To this particular shaft, it will be always normal to the shaft. Now, suppose there is a disturbance, wind is blowing, one side aerodynamic load will go up, other side will decrease. That means, what this will respond to the disturbance. It will respond to, because when the wind blows, even they get affected, please understand. As a result, the helicopter will start moving. Helicopter is an unstable vehicle, because that only when you prove it, solve everything, then only you will know. Helicopter is an unstable, like a bicycle, but bicycle is at least dynamically you can make it stable, but here you have to keep, see there also what you are doing, you are actually adjusting it, right, keep on changing the front wheel without your knowledge. Here the pilot has to keep on adjusting, otherwise you will not be able to fly. It is statically unstable, dynamically unstable, okay, because there the control he gets essentially from the, what is that, the gyroscopic. Suppose you lock the front wheel and ride the bicycle. If you have done it, no, I had done it, you usually immediately you fall down, that is all, you have no control, okay. So, you have to be always sitting there to control and uh, that is where the pilot becomes very important. His workload is always there, he has to fly, okay. To relieve his workload, this is added. She said, if there is a disturbance, this will respond, this response will affect the pitch such a way, whatever is the undesirable, it will come back. But it is not that it will be completely make it stable, no. it, it, it improves a little bit. That is all, okay, because the dynamics relating this to that is more complex because you have to have, because the pitch angle, you have to understand how various pitch is really the mechanism, how it is implemented. Then you have to convert it into mathematical formulation and then you have to solve the full stability problem. So, you will find here a variety of problems like what you have in aircraft also. One is trim, trim means, hey, I want to fly at this particular condition, either hover. Now, what should be the control input I should give? That is a trim. Then you want to fly at some 100 meters, not 100 meters, maybe 100 knots or 150 knots, you take it, you have to fly. What should be the control input? You should give such that the helicopter will fly at that speed over. Then you say you want control, you want to maneuver. So, how much the pilot command should give such that the helicopter will behave the way you want it to behave, okay. That is very important, that is the control part, okay. In addition, you will have vibration problems, all the other problems you will have. So, helicopter vibration becomes a very, very important thing and noise, you know the noise. Whenever it flies, it makes hell of a noise. Of course, jet aircraft makes also noise, but that goes very high, whereas the helicopters, uh, they do not go at that height. So, you find the noise. Noise is one area, still lot of research is being done. I do not think it is fully understood and then we have solved every problem and things like that. Actually, vibration problem is also not solved, because of various complexities, okay. Then, you want to see the controller how it is implemented there, you can go there and then you can show how we are sending the signal from the computer to this, so that this is going to fly autonomous, okay. In the sense, there is no pilot, pilot is not there to control, but instead of pilot, the computer is there to control, okay. That is the data acquisition system, okay. 
So, this is the national instruments data acquisition system. As well as we generate the controls from here, the electrical pulses, okay. And they are of some particular type, it is called the pulse width modulation PWM signal. And the signal goes through some circuit here, goes to the helicopter through wires and we can make it wireless. We have done some of them wireless through the wireless unit. Now, for ease of operation, he has created through virtual instrumentation this type of a display. Okay, this is actually you write the display. Now, you see this particular unit, there is a small dial which shows there is a red line a red needle and a blue needle. Blue needle tells what is the reference RPM is a 900 set point. That means, set RPM is 900. So, it will be at the blue. If we change 1000, that will go to 1000. Now, once the engine is started, the magnetic pulse that is measured, that signal comes. So, we basically get two pulses or four or five pulses, get the time duration for that pulse, calculate what is the RPM and that is denoted by this red and you will see once the engine is on, the red will start shaking. Okay. As you increase the throttle of the engine, that means you increase more power, so the rotor RPM picks up, then this needle will start going. And this is a closed loop, we actually show the display also. What is the engine actually? This is shown in a dial, here it is a time signal. How actually the RPM is varying with time, actual signal. We take it, we display here. Then he has another one auto working and manual working. Manual means manually, if he moves this dial, see here that is he is changing the throttle manual. So, he will move through the cursor, he will go or else he will give the input here number wise, then it will automatically change. See this will go either through entry or through mouse. But once he goes and clicks auto mode, immediately the closed loop control system takes over and then you will find this will go to that and this automatically the auto mode you see the signal will keep changing, throttle will go to a particular value where the set RPM and the actual RPM should be identical, but you will find then only this is what the practical things. It is if you get it plus minus some number within that range is great. So, mathematically you can always simulate in the computer, okay, nice curve, but in reality it is not, because it is the actual vibrating environment, how the signal comes, what fine tune you can give in pitch angle or the servo control angle, how much you can give, whether you can control 0 0.01 degree or 0 0 0.01, see if you, that kind of a fine control you cannot do it, okay. If you give 0 0.3 degree in the rotor blade pitch angle, that is good. That means 0 0.3, 0 0.1. Suppose if it demands, give it 0 0.01 degree, you cannot even measure it number 1 with the online. So, you, then you find the limitations of various sensor mechanism, actuator mechanism and the mechanical system, then you will say this is all you can achieve. Okay. And if you achieve the best possible within that, then you say, okay, my system is wonderful and this is the reality. Okay, reality is much, much complicated. I am telling you, even for a simple problem, RPM regulation, it is a tough thing, but we have achieved the RPM regulation without, now it is wonderful. Okay, then this is only for that display and we also monitor when uh, here he has created a little bit more. Uh, no, what is the too many information? You see collective, roll, pitch, yeah. That means these are the four inputs. 
here it is what is it roll pitch yeah angle okay and these are the inputs that go to the that servo actuator and he can again auto or manual and he can manually change one by one if he wants because the reason we have incorporated this is we wanted to study first open loop open loop means if i give this much how the vehicle will behave okay, that is the basic characteristic of the vehicle okay so we said okay do it after that once we are confident everything is wonderful then we say okay auto that means it will automatically take over the flight and we have done that that was the latest which is just about i think in a couple of months we achieved the flight pitch roll yaw control and you will find the helicopter is quite stable in that but translation we did not control it that will come later that we are working on okay now here you will have lot of uh, numbers are displayed these numbers basically correspond to the gain in the closed loop system so that is not important for you right now okay so this is how but this is entire unit and the data is constantly downloaded so that gets saved here in the system so after the experiment is over we can go analyze how the vehicle is moving even though we keep and the rpm is also recorded you will know whether the rpm is kept constant or whether it is fluctuating what is happening so it is like a monitoring the condition of the helicopter okay that is the and this was this is through virtual instrumentation so it is like actually you will find this is like an instrument okay with all the dials but you can create everything it's very very versatile and we can use it but of course there are limitations it is not that it will do everything there are limitations how much you can display because if you put too many things it will be you yourself may not know what is what okay up to some information you can display some you have to save it so as we progress in the experiment we know what to display what to put it back at the background etc okay you have any any questions on this hmm but if you want you have to know the cost nobody has the cost of the helicopter cost of the helicopter is more than 2 lakhs okay one helicopter and the huh developed here or this no okay now you are asking a different question see very simple question i showed the gear the gear fails in 10 runs because you see you see the gear here there is a you can see here there is a gear huh that gear is going the drive shaft is going through that the tail drive shaft and there is a coupler inside that coupler basically transmits the power from here to the drive shaft and the coupler fails so one day when you were running suddenly tail stopped you don't know what is what happened then you go keep looking at it there then you, but this you have to open it up then when you open the coupler was gone then we have to make the coupler also so the coupler was made that means you have to make the same drying analysis material selection everything goes so this gear is our gear then there is a liner in the centrifugal clutch i said there is some material there is a liner material that went into quite a bit because we did not know while running an experiment suddenly what was working beautifully one day my rpm we have a good control of rpm suddenly the rpm started going 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 up and down we have no clue why the, it is changing cuz everything is we thought that maybe the fuel is see how fuel is getting choked so look at that clean the engine put the, everything you do nothing rpm and suddenly one day keep looking at it when you go in the evening keep when you jog when you do anything you keep that is in your mind always please remember then suddenly i said hey open this then we open it the liner was gone 
okay the liner was actually wear and tear and getting the liner material finally now we have everything we see the problems we faced and then the solution sometimes you don't know why certain things are happening okay that is a challenging in one hand when you get the solution if you don't have a solution it is still a nightmare okay but once you get it you will say oh this is so trivial and the trivial things are the ones which make that is where the experience is so we said that these are the critical issues which nobody will tell you you go through all the problems and if you make then people will come to you if you fly then we will say oh that means these guys have achieved that means they must have gone through problems if somebody says see six component load cell this one this one the, okay six component means it can give me thrust which is the lift side force forward force all up this way that way and then three moments it will give me all the loads so when i rotate the rotor i give different pitch input but i have a calibrated thing because i have calibrated he gives a electrical signal electrical signal to pitch angle we have a curve calibrated curve and we know what pitch angle we give then immediately the load if you increase we increase the load and the load cell we collect the data and then we will know how the data is what is the variation of pitch with respect to steady state value we can get transient also we have the transient and uh, now i can give different cyclic inputs and i can measure how much forward force i am generating how much pitch movement i generate essentially i can get controlled derivatives in hover in the test rig okay we did some measurements preliminary measurements we have done they were quite successful but now we want to improve some more test and uh, there are some problems which we will <laughs> address one by one and then see this is this is basically load measurements on the and when we do the load measurement the interesting thing is i don't want the in the fuel tank to be part of the helicopter because if i put the fuel tank as a part as the fuel goes out what will happen cg is shifting when the cg shifts i will get a different moment on the load cell so what we did was so but in actual this that will be the case that will be there but i want to see the characteristic of the rotor see i want to know what is the capability of the rotor so i kept the fuel tank outside and then i disconnected the tail rotor because the tail rotor will give a force i said i want to isolate now you see i am only measuring the main rotor force and i can have a theoretical formulation then match both check how good we are how bad we are in terms of theory experiment then i can put the tail rotor later and i will see how much i generate the side force as well as the yeah okay so this can one mtech student has completed the thesis and now we need to do some more work so this will work we will go on for a long time because the load measurements actual load measurements is still you cannot get anywhere in the outside if we have our data then it is very very valuable data highly valuable everybody will tell you, you they will immediately accept the publication also. because practical things always have value okay so this load test and uh, the load cell again cast wise because why we made this tower this looks because i want to keep the helicopter at different heights if i want to do so i can remove every stage remove it and then i can bring down the helicopter and then keep the test in that that means the ground effect the effect of ground i can study okay so this is a very expensive load sir it is about 17 lakhs okay and then those computers they are all both of them that is more than 27 lakhs okay so now you know that investment that has gone on in this lab is a substantial investment 
okay, because in terms of equipments, in term, because otherwise without this you cannot do anything. Now we can do any measurement, anything, any study. I have an interest that you change the tip shape. What is the performance of the blade? Okay, change the tip. That means you manufacture. We manufacture blades. You change, uh, give a different tip shape, study the effect. But these are all not available anywhere. But of course, these are all futuristic. One can do. There is no end to uh, the kind of very advanced research one can do. But of course, one has to struggle. 